We're standing here really where this industry started and that's in the Ness domain and we're here with Arlen, Zach and Corey. Um, it's the family Ness and Arlen, I, I gotta ask you, you know, you started in the 60s, you're in Northern California and you thought what? Yeah, just uh, always wanted a motorcycle and uh, I didn't get one till uh, I was probably uh, 24 or something like that and uh, just loved it and so I've been doing it ever since. And in doing it ever since, I mean, you know, what, 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 what was it that drove you and what continues to drive you? Well, working on them, you know, I always liked working with my hands before I had a motorcycle. Uh, I had some hot rods and things like that, so, but the motorcycles are so much fun to ride and meeting all the people. Of course, it was different back in the early 60s. It was, you couldn't go a lot of places on your motorcycle and get served or stuff, but, uh, you know, it was fun working on them, making parts, because there wasn't nothing to buy in those days. You just said something I haven't heard before. If you were riding a bike back then, you didn't get served. Yeah, you know, it served a lot of restaurants, and they wouldn't—you couldn't stay in motels. And... Really? Oh, yeah. I, I, seriously, you're folks, riding... you're hearing something I've never heard before. So I, I want—you got to hear this. If you were riding a Harley back in those days, you were considered an outlaw. And uh, long hair—they didn't—they didn't like it, you know. So uh, sure changed now, though. Corey, you, you came into the industry a few years back and, and you really are where this industry is at right now. Talk to me about what you see and what's continuing to, you know, make this industry live. Well, people, uh, you know, people have watched their dough a little bit and, and instead of building full customs, they've definitely gone more into fixing up their, you know, their, their existing bike, their stock bike and making changes to that. And, uh, uh, you know, if you've been able to make parts for those kinds of things, you know, you can just keep yourself keep yourself pretty busy. You know, and um, hopefully, I think I think every in people's in people's uh, blood, they still like building a, a, a complete bike, and I, that's, I think that's going to come back. And we're starting to dibble dabble in that a little bit. We're bringing one of our old frames back from 30 years ago that we used to make. Uh, that is where that's where more of the passion is. I mean, we all like fixing up our bike, but building a bike is really that's the ultimate deal. You know. And I think in time, in time, that's gonna, that's gonna, that's that's gonna come back and be a bigger part like it, like it was a few years back. Yeah, I, I know your product line is 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 really uh, obviously you guys kill super custom and and you've dominated for years and that's where the market was was really building and focused for the last you know decade on radical stuff. But what you guys are doing now is you're really kind of simplifying your product line and focusing on that new consumer that maybe doesn't have that mechanical experience and really able to adapt and to install those parts on his own that you sell and manufacture and you're really focusing on that. How's that going to help you keep filling that void? Well, you know, when we make something now, it's we do the best we can to make it more plug and play. You know, if guys are watching their dough, they might might like, a, you know, a new lighting accessory, a new tail light or something. If, if, they, if he can maybe install it himself, plug, you know, where it plugs in, hey, he's you know, he doesn't got to spend uh, you know 50 or 100 bucks at a shop to to install it. Um, just you know, more ways to make it easy for the consumer to to make changes and have the confidence to do it himself. I think that's I think it's a good good place to be. And so we started with where it where it was and where it began, we, where it's at right now, and we've gone to where it's where it's going. And that's Zach. And Zach is you know the 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 grandson and the son and and he's taking it. Zach, what do you see happening in the market that's going to bring customers that are your age into it? Well, I definitely, there's, there's a huge gap between the guys that are riding now and, and I guess my, my generation, for lack of a better word. So, it really, is it, you got to be appealing to them and actually see it, and also touchable. You know, obviously, you guys my age and where the economy is at, at, at a certain point, not people don't really have the dough to spend on a bike. So, definitely, things get better. Obviously, it'll be better for everyone as a general. But, but definitely, you know, coming back and seeing what they can really get from motorcycle and what they really got to get on a bike and get on the experience, get on the road. and. And really get what we're feeling for, you know, get what we're feeling, why we love it, and once once they really get on a bike and get into it, they'll jump on it just like everyone else has. So. What do you think about this bobber, you know, this bobber market? And and you know, I, I kind of see your guys at your age, maybe a little bit older. What are you like, 22 or 22. so? Yeah, um, I see them really kind of gravitating towards that. How are you gonna How are you gonna design and fill that market? Um, well, I mean, there's there's definitely. I mean, everyone's got their own taste, and there's definitely there's a bunch of different genres. And the great thing about the motorcycle industry is, you know. No matter what a trend is, there's always going to be someone who's stuck to what they like. You know, it's either going to be your, your sport guys, there's going to be your bobber guys, there's going to be your chopper guys. I mean, there's, there's all different. So, definitely, um, as, as far as my generation, I think they really got to have the usability out of it. You really got to have a product, and with all the competitors in the industry now, you really got to push out something that has not only it looks good, but it's got to perform well. You got to really fill all the voids what, what a motorcycle rider really needs. 
So definitely with us, you know, it's, it's speaking just for my generation. Something that rides fun and look and it looks cool, and something that actually you get the best bang for your buck. And you can really put a good amount of money in and enjoy it in all aspects. And it's not just it's it's not really just hey let's put it in the garage. You're really it's it's a life experience. You really got to live and breathe it. You know. So it's not about standing next to it. It's really about it's, that generation X. And I heard something today. Tell me if this makes sense. That it's just wrong enough to be right. Yeah, you know, you gotta do something a little different to make it cool. You know, it's gotta be a little wrong to, you gotta kinda piss off someone in some certain way to make it cool. So you gotta do something a little different and but, but while doing it, still making it, you can you can beat the hell out of it. You can pull push everything out of your motorcycle that you that you want to. I gotta ask you a question. Coming where you came from and what you were tempted by in the garage, what's the first real big bike that you uh, took off on and question better that is, did you have permission? <laughs> Well, yeah, I mean, sometimes maybe I, it's better to say sorry than ask, yeah, sometimes, but the, um, <laughs> but definitely, I, actually, it was, it was funny, the first first bike I really got on, as far as a big full custom, was about 14, 15, and it was really my dad rolling in, and I, I you know, I always itched on him, hey, let me do this, you know, and he always got me on dirt bikes, and I was riding since, you know, but yay high, but it was really, you know, get a full custom, he rolled in and said, well, get on it, see what you got, and go on it, it was, it was definitely a little nerve-wracking, because it's, you know, it's a full full custom bike yeah, and you know you're 14 15 years old but you know well laconia how about laconia on look so my i mean just tell you a little story of my first bike run and, and I, I just completed my first full custom and it sold two days before it's finished you know some guy bought it immediately so so it shipped off you know i rode a few times and that shipped off so i went to laconia which is my first bike run about 15 and there was two bikes there that we brought and uh, one of them was his um i asked curvaceous bike which oh, yeah. is um in the smithsonian it's that's that's his baby per se. So he was riding that one. Didn't give me a chance to screw that one up. But the uh, the only other option was the supercharged 124 full chopper, gold plated. It was actually a Discovery, Discovery, Discovery bike. uh, biker oh. build off bike. Oh. <laughs> so you know you got this small little kid riding this monster machine, and it was you just you, know, you get on and going. Luckily, you know I've been I've been in it really my entire life. So luckily, nothing bad happened. You know? I, I think that's that's really cool. I, I, I don't know if I want my son to be taken off on my bike like that, but <laughs> so, yeah. So I got a question, Arlen. Are you having any fun yet? It's always fun. It's, uh, I should be retired, but I'm having too much fun. Why give this up, right? Yeah. Yeah, this is great. I mean, they haven't done so long. That's all we know. So. Uh, what do you think about uh, the grandson yeah. generation? Yeah, he's uh, he went to school there, and he did really well in school, and he's got a good eye, and. Uh, Actually, he did the catalog this year, so uh, really it helped Corey out, uh, give him more time, so uh, working out great. That's awesome. Corey, I mean, you know, I was like mid-90s and you really just kind of came full stream into this company and um, did you think then that you would evolve it to what it is and did you actually at that point think that Zach would come in or you'd even let him come in? I, I really didn't know what to what to expect, but we just kept working at it, kept working hard. Things kept getting better and better, and even you know, we've had a few economical times as far as when the uh, um, turned down turned down in the economy. But we still we were still fairly small, so we were still growing. You know, even though the economy at times was was lousy, and I remember you know, I remember talking to a lot of people outside of our industry having a hard time, and we but we, we just kept. Kept itch, you know itching away. I think we had a, had the bug and a lot of enthusiasm, and uh, and you know we built it to a to a nice sized company, and and we love what we do, and you know like Zach saying, you know getting people to experience it and ride it. I mean I I, I can't recommend uh, anything more than someone getting on a bike and even doing this doing a Sturgis ride, ride from where you are. In our case, we're in California. It's it's depending on the route you go. It's usually a couple thousand miles or where we go, but we take our time. But for someone to as soon as someone does that, they're hooked. They're, hooked yeah. they're done. They're hooked. You know, no matter what they're riding, if, no matter what kind of bike it is. But you, you do it. You have you have the fun with your buddies. You meet people on the way. But you got to get people on a seat and do a deal like that. A lot of times, a guy will buy a, a buy a bike. He's always wanted. It, he's read about it, but he's he doesn't know who to go ride with. And then he might not continue because he doesn't. He wants to experience it with a bunch of people. So, you know, you got to get out and meet people. Yeah, I mean, you meet them on forums, uh, whatever it is, but just you got to get out and ride and do do a trip. And 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 then you're hooked and you're you're just going to you're going to love it that much more. This is a great industry. If you guys are riders, 
It's awesome. I'm glad you're here. If you're not riders, I encourage you to ride. And I encourage you of one thing is to realize that it's not about what you ride, it's that you ride. And if you can keep it as real as the Nest family has kept it and realize that the core value is about that wind blowing through your hair or across your face and the wheels rolling down the highway, you're going to like what you get. So stay tuned. This is uh, JMP Cycles Icon Interviews and we're keeping the world on two wheels. <laughs>